In the beginning, there was nothing. Only emptiness and darkness. The darkness filled the skies and covered the water. Yet, in the midst of the darkness, there was God. He was waiting quietly, patiently, for just the right moment to begin what he had planned all along. And when the time was just right, he spoke. His voice echoed to the farthest corners of the darkness and filled it with the warm glow of the first light. He saw that the light was good, so he kept it apart from the darkness. So the night passed when the morning came, marking the first day, but there was more to come. From ground and sky to the forest and streams, he placed the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky. He brought to life all of the animals. God created everything we see and everything we feel. The architect was creating a masterpiece. And looking over his work at the end of each day, he was delighted because everything he made was good. But he wasn't finished yet because the grandest part of God's plan was his desire to share his creation with those that he loved and who could love him in return. So in his very own image, he created us. In giving us his very breath, he welcomed us into a perfect life and love to share with him forever. Then God saw all that he created and it was good. Merry Christmas. We are so glad that you could join us. If you would just take this time as an opportunity to reflect on the beauty of Christ's birth as we worship together.
laid down his sweet head the stars in the sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the Oh, 
adore him, Christ the Lord. Cause you are worthy of it all. Cause you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Cause you are worthy of it all. And you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things, for you deserve the glory. Yes, you deserve it all, because you are worthy of it all. I'd love to share with you the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will be great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. 
they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. This is the Christmas story. But what I want you to understand, what I want to remind you of, the big idea for tonight, is that the story of Christmas was always designed to be the beginning. Like it's episode one, it's the pilot show. God always intended for his story to continue in your life and in mine. Now you might be asking, like what do you mean the story continuing? How would the story continue in my life? Think about it this way. In our modern terms, you have a, a show you're watching on Netflix, or maybe you're streaming it on Hulu or Amazon or Disney Plus. And when you get to the end of that episode, like, and you're intrigued, you're captivated, you loved it, they left you on the edge, what do you do? Like, what do we all do? We click that little red button in the bottom right hand corner, play next episode. And the streaming companies, they know we want the story to continue. They know already we love the story. So what do they do? They're even helping us out. You don't even have to push the button anymore. The next episode is automatically going to play in just a few seconds. Now, unless you're watching The Mandalorian, now you're watching this on Disney Plus, this is the most watched show of 2020. 100 million viewers to this show. Now, Disney has figured it out. What they'll do is at the end of that episode, you've got to wait an entire week for the next one. They're, they're going to make us go crazy waiting to see what happens to precious little baby Yoda. But almost every show is, you stream, you get to keep going. For example, Cobra Kai, which is actually, by the way, the mo number four most watched show in 2020. If you watch this show or, or almost any other show, when you get to the end of that show and it's captured you, what do you do? <laughs> Instead of being a responsible adult, you say one of the most famous of all streaming phrases. You know these lines. Let's just watch, say it with me, one more episode. And that one more episode turns into two and three and four. And before you know it, you've streamed a whole season back to back and beyond. It's interesting. We want the story to continue. Like we demand that the story continue. That's why we keep pressing play next episode. Yet when it comes to God, and the story he wants to tell in our life, we often take a different approach. You see, what we do so many times is God starts to stir. He starts to move in our heart or in our lives. He starts to tell his story. Some of you just tonight already plugged into this online service, engaging in the music and being with us. You've already felt God start to move in you. But Sadly, what we do sometimes is we don't press play next episode. Instead, we give God this small window, maybe one church service or two church services a year, and then we walk away from the story he begins to write. Now, you might be thinking, okay, I'm intrigued. How would I play next episode when it comes to God's story? The best answer, get plugged in and involved in an environment where you can learn what it really means to be a Christian. Like a local church that's chosen to just be sold out on being just like Jesus. Why? Because when Jesus left this earth, he left establishing an avenue for you and I to experience him. And that is a church that follows Jesus Christ. It's not the only avenue, but it's the primary one. Now, listen, I know what some of you are saying. No, 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 pastor boy. Um, I don't do church. Like, I'm not in a church. I did church. It doesn't work. Or I don't do religion. You know, I, I just don't see that working for me. In fact, some of you are like, I'm only watching this church service tonight because if I don't, somebody's going to end up mad, right? I might not get invited to Christmas dinner. You know, I, I might just get written out of the will. So I'm here watching. I don't know why you're watching tonight, but I'm so glad you are. Like, I really am. And what I want you to hear from me as a pastor, uh, I'm not a, much into religion either, at least not in the way you might be thinking. You see, religion often reduces faith to what we can do and what we can't do. You think Jesus came and died on the cross for you and I just to give us a set of rules to follow? No, 
No way. Now, I know even Christians sometimes have misrepresented what Christianity is all about. But what I want you to hear tonight from me is that we want to be all about a real connection to God through Jesus. And because of that, you need to know that we're all about these things and helping you discover that here at Wendover Hills. It's an adventure with him. That's what he wants for you. He wants to write your best story yet. Not simply rules, but relationship with God and with other. How? By opening up the scriptures and pressing play next episode on the story that God has for your life. So here's my challenge for you in 2021. Would you press play on the next episode of God's story in your life, the one he wants to write? Would you regularly place yourself in an environment, a local church, where you can learn what it really means to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Would you go beyond maybe just the one or two episodes by way of just the one or two church services a year and see what more God wants to write to your story in 2021? Would you let the story of God continue in your life? Listen, I realize some of you, you might doubt there's even a good story to write. It's been a tough year. I mean, maybe even tougher for you. But listen, when our favorite character has a rough episode, and they always do somewhere in the season, right? I mean, they get heaped on or they get bashed on, they get beat up, they get left in the alley. What do we do? Do we just stop? No, we keep on going for the next episode. We continue, why? Because we understand. We understand that our favorite character's greatest setback is actually the setup for their greatest story yet. The same is true for you. Listen, do you think that even though you've had a rough patch that God intends for you to just stay there? No way, not at all. So how about it? Will you lean in and say, let's just watch one more episode? The most famous of all streaming words. Would you just do that in your relationship with God and let the story continue this coming year? Let me give you two practical ways you can do this. Number one, find a local church that identifies with being just like Jesus in all they say and do. A, a church committed to Jesus' teachings of loving and serving and living those things out. A church that chooses like the righteousness of Jesus instead of simply a set of rules. This is how God begins to write his story into your life. Secondly, would you plug in every week to that church, whether it's online or in person? We are in a weird time, a weird time. But churches everywhere, great churches, are offering new avenues on how we can be together or how we can learn together about Jesus. We're doing that here at Wendover Hills, but God can't write that part of the story if you don't plug in. So let me finish off this message by asking you to consider filling in two blanks. Actually, now, then before you wake up on Christmas morning, from now to then, fill in these blanks. This is your time of reflection and thinking about what you have seen and heard and learned tonight. The first, my, big, my next step to being a part of God's story is what? What does that look like? What if you started attending church in person or online from now to Easter and you just see if God doesn't start writing a better story for your life? How about if you start looking for ways to serve even outside of your family, finding ways to intentionally bless other people? Maybe you've been around church for a while. Maybe these songs and some of this message is not new to you. Can I ask you to consider a blank as well? To reflect on this, my next step to share God's story with others is what? How are you going to start sharing your story with others? In 2021, I would hope that many of you would start inviting people along with you. And better yet, start inviting people along to hear the story God has written in your life. The greatest story that you can tell others is a story God has written right in you. 
Can I finish off our time together by reading to you the continued story of the shepherds? After seeing this, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told, told them. In other words, they played the next episode. Would you let God's story continue? The story he is seeking to write, the story he is actually speaking into your heart tonight, the beginning words of that journey, would you let them play out in your life in this coming year? That's exactly what I'm going to be praying for you. May God bless. Have a Merry Christmas. Well, hey, we just want to say thanks for joining us uh, for our online Christmas Eve service. And if anything uh, from tonight's message resonated within your heart and you would like to find out more about God's story in your life, just text the word CONNECT to 866-824-0850 or you can go to wonderverhills.org and find a tab that says CONNECT with us. And we'd love to help you discover God's story in your life. Merry Christmas.